Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about stars. Now, before we get into any of the fancy details, I'd like to talk about spectral types first. They come in seven different types, which are O, B, A, F, G, K, M respectively. Don't ask me why they're called in that sequence because I don't know. Hydrogen lines. Anyway, the most common way to represent them is a HR diagram. And as you can see, O is the hottest being blue and M is the coldest being red. Okay, this is counterintuitive. The lower mass stars are not so interesting. They basically just turn to white dwarfs, but they do have an intermediate phase, which is called a blue dwarf, where the temperature goes really high. They live uh, from 1 to 100 trillion years, and they spawn a lot of aliens in the meantime. This kind of also explains why we're so early and about gravity aliens. So Rational Animation did two really amazing videos on it, and you should really check it out. Link in the description. Anyway, the, the stars are much colder than the sun, usually, and they basically just tidal lock their planets, which is a bit like how the moon is tidally locked to the Earth, as shown on screen. The, as I said before, these stars are much cooler than uh, the sun because they're red dwarfs, and actually the lower mass red dwarfs. And there's the medium mass stars, like our sun. There's, uh, these are much more interesting, and basically they turn to red giants first instead of just turning into a white dwarf. This is kind of self-explanatory. And they also have this really fancy name, uh, called asymptotic giant branch, which is when the star is massive enough to burn helium, they go into this stage. Either way, they both turn into a uh, white dwarf. They generally live from 100 million to 100 billion years, and yeah, this is kind of the most common type of ending these most stars we see in the night sky will be. And there's the really massive ones. And they basically just undergo a sequence of very self-explanatory supergiant phases. Blue supergiant, white supergiant, yellow supergiant, actually hypergiant as well, and red supergiant. Now they blow up in a supernova explosion and there are two possible outcomes. Either they become a neutron stars, uh, which is when their core is less than an Oppenheimer uh, limit and they also become black holes if their core is massive enough and I also did a video on black holes if you're interested now They can also directly turn into black holes if their mass is greater than 250 solar masses Oh, yeah, there's the power and stability supernova, but we don't need to talk about that these are for the any of the most massive stars and yeah Thanks for watching, I guess, and I really hope to enjoy it, and then again, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.